Today I'm going to answer the Cambridge IGCSE physics paper, paper 2, multiple choice, and it's the extended one. And this is from November 2020. I'm going to do the first 20 questions explaining to you how I arrive at each answer. For which one of the following measurements would a micrometer screw gauge be most suitable? So obviously the key clue here is that it's measuring in micrometers. So think about all of these things, the length of this page and the length of the pencil. These are around 30 centimetres long, so a micrometer screw gauge is not going to be suitable there. The diameter of a wire is sounding pretty good at this point because the wire, remember, is very thin. The diameter of an atom, well, atoms are absolutely tiny, so it's not going to be that. So the answer here is C. The speed time graph represents a journey. How does the graph show that the distance travelled in section X of the journey is greater than the distance travelled in section Y? So we're comparing these portions of the graph. And remember, with a speed time graph, Distance is given by the area under the line. So let's look for an answer which demonstrates that. A, the area below section X of the graph is greater than the area below section Y. Yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping for. So the answer here is A. If you have time, obviously make sure you double check B, C and D. They should be arguing against what I was saying here. But yeah, A is the answer. A car is travelling at a velocity of 2 metres per second. It accelerates at a constant 0.2 meters per second squared for 2.5 minutes. What is the final velocity of the car? So remember for me that acceleration is final speed minus initial speed over time. We know the acceleration is 0.2. We're looking for the final velocity, so V. The initial velocity was 2 and our time is 2.5 minutes. Be careful with your units, you need that minutes in seconds. So we're going to multiply that by 60. So to sort this equation out a little bit, do 2.5 times 60 and then multiply it by 0 0.2 to get 30 equals V minus 2. And then to get V by itself, you want to add 2 to both sides. So your final answer here is 32 meters per second, which is option D. What quantity is weight an example of? Well, remember the unit of weight is newtons, which matches the unit of force, which is also newtons. So the answer here is B. Acceleration, remember, is meters per second squared. Mass is in kilograms, and one of the pressure units is pascals. A sphere P is made of steel and has a weight of 10 newtons on Earth. Another sphere Q, also made of steel, has a weight of 10 newtons on Mars. The gravitational field strength on Earth is greater than the gravitational field strength on Mars. Which statement is correct? So remember, we know that weight is given by this equation. Weight equals mass times gravity. So I was just making a note there that the gravitational field strength is less on Mars, which they've already pointed out. So now let's go through the statements and work out which of the following is correct. The mass of sphere P is the same as the mass of sphere Q. Well, that's not true. The mass of sphere P is less than the mass of sphere Q. Yes, that must be true because we know according to this equation that weight is the product of mass times gravitational field strength. So the fact that the gravitational field strength on Earth is greater than that of Mars means that the mass of sphere P must be less than that of sphere Q. A metal ball is attached to a cork and is lowered into a measuring cylinder. Pulling the cork into the water is shown. The mass of the cork is 4.8 grams. What is the density of the cork? So use this formula triangle, drunk men vomit, tell you that density is mass over volume. Our mass is nice and straightforward, it's 4.8 grams. Be careful now with your volume. You're after just the volume changed as a result of the cork entering that water. So. This is your metal ball, here's your cork. So really, you're looking at the volume difference, which is just brought about by the cork itself. So really, you're comparing this volume here with this one here, because it's only that cork being lowered that causes the change in volume. So it's actually going to be 80 minus 56, which is 24. So that's the volume you use to get a value of 0 0.2, which is B. A uniform plank rests on a pivot at its centre, Two children, P and Q, sit on the plank in the position shown. The mass of child P is 25 kilograms. Plank is balanced. What is the mass of child Q? So remember, with moments, clockwise moments equal anti-clockwise moments. So to calculate a moment, you do force times distance. So I'm just going to directly convert 25 kilograms into weight, because remember, that's the same as Force, so I just times it by 10 because we're on Earth, so that's the equivalent of 250 newtons. So we know that child Q will be our clockwise moment. We know that child P 
will be our anti-clockwise moment. We're going to do 250 newtons times that perpendicular distance from the pivot equals x, which is what we're after, multiplied by that distance, which is 1.5. So sort out your maths. Divide both sides by 1.5 to get 200 newtons. And remember to convert that into mass. You divide by 10 to get 20 kilograms, which is A. Obviously, looking at this question, you could have got away with not converting your kilograms into force. I just wanted to make sure that I was keeping it nice and accurate according to this equation. But as you can see, we multiplied by 10 to divide by 10. So really, there was no need to do that. The diagram shows three forces acting on an object. What is the value of the resulting force acting on the object? We need to do this as a triangle. So we know that the force upwards is 6 newtons. And then if we look at these two values, we have a resultant force, which is 8 newtons to the right. And then we need to use Pythagoras to help us find out what that resultant force is. So remember, we've got a right angle triangle here. And according to Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now remember that c squared is the hypotenuse. doesn't matter what letter you attribute the other sides. So let's do 6 squared plus 8 squared is c squared, which is what we're after. So that's 36 plus 64 equals c squared. So c squared is 100, meaning that the square root of that is 10. So the resultant force here is 10 newtons. An object with a mass of 0.2 kilograms moves at 0.2 meters per second as shown. Which other object has a momentum that is identical to the momentum of this object? So remember that momentum equals mass times velocity, which is 0.2 times 0.2 to get 0.04 kilograms meters per second. So we're looking from option A, B, C and D, which of the following has that same momentum in the same direction? Because remember, momentum is a vector quantity with both a magnitude and a direction. So we need a matching direction, which we can see here. And if you were to multiply those numbers together, you'd also get 0 0.04. So the answer is C. A stone is dropped from rest at a height of two meters above the surface of a planet. The planet has no atmosphere. The speed of the stone just before reaching the surface of the planet is 3.8 meters per second. What is the acceleration of free fall of the planet? This is a Subat equation, which is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So remember that V stands for final speed, which is here. U stands for initial speed, which we know is zero. A stands for acceleration, and then S stands for distance. So substitute those values into the equation. So it's 3.8 squared equals zero plus two times A, which is what we're after, times two, which is the distance. So 3.8 squared equals 4a. So then finally, to find a, you do 3.8 squared divided by 4 to get a equaling 3.6, which is c. An electric motor uses 1,000 joules of electrical energy. It provides 450 useful output energy. What is the efficiency of the motor? So efficiency equals useful energy out over total energy in times by 100 which is therefore 450 divided by 1,000 times by 100. So the answer here is 45%. To calculate the power produced by a force, the size of the force must be known. What else needs to be known to calculate the power? So this is where you need really good knowledge of your equations. So the ones you need are, we play tennis. This sounds so weird, but I used this when I was doing my GCSEs. Will Ford die? I don't even know what that is about but it's still what I use today. And so what that's saying is, look, to calculate power, we need work done over time. So we definitely need time. But then what do we need for work done? Well, work done is force times distance. So we need force and distance to plug in. So we've been told here that the force must be known. But what else do we need? We need time. And we need distance, which is why A is the answer. A barometer reads 780 millimetres of mercury. Mercury has a density of 1.36 times 10 to the 4. What is the pressure of the atmosphere in newtons per metre squared? So remember, a barometer measures pressure, and it does that by measuring the distance moved by that mercury. 
which we know is 780 millimetres. We've got the density here. The equation you need is pressure equals height times density times gravity. So the height we've been told is 780 millimetres. Be careful, that needs to be in metres. So you need to divide that number by 1,000. Our density is 1.36 times 10 to the 4. And remember, gravity on Earth is 10. And you'll get an answer, which is this one here. Put that in standard form. So it's 1.1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So B is the answer. The diagram shows the mercury barometer, which height is used as a measurement of atmospheric pressure. So remember, it's all to do with how high that mercury column has raised from a standard point, which is this one here. So the answer here is C. A student splashes water onto her face. Here are three statements about the effects. The water uses energy to evaporate. Yeah, that's true. The water gains energy from the student. Yeah, because the student is warm-blooded. The face of the student cools. Yeah, that's why they did it in the first place to cool themselves down. So which statements are correct? Well, it's all of them. So that answer there is D. When a bridge is built, a gap is left between each concrete slab. Why are these gaps left? A, concrete expands on warm days. Yes. It makes sense that when things are heated, they expand because those particles are further apart. And so the answer here is A. The specific heat capacity of solid P is greater than that of solid Q. Remember, that's the energy required to heat one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. What does this statement mean? Less energy is needed to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius of unit mass of solid P than unit mass of solid Q. No, that's the opposite of what I just said. Less energy is needed to melt. No, that's not what this is about. More energy is needed to raise the temperature of one degree Celsius of unit mass of solid P than unit mass of solid Q. Yes, that's true. 18. A student placed a number of ice cubes in a container with a hole in the base. He left them to melt so that the water dripped into a beaker placed on a balance. The student recorded the initial mass of the beaker and the final mass of the beaker and water after five minutes. The specific latent heat of fusion for water is 334. How much energy was absorbed from the surroundings in order to melt the ice? So you're using this equation here. So after Q, the mass is 0.16, take away 0 0.05, 0 0.11. Be careful with your units. Remember, this is per gram and this is in kilos, so you want to divide that by a 1,000 and then times it by our latent heat of fusion, which is 334, to get an answer of 37,000 joules, which is C. The diagram shows four rods. Each rod is made of a different metal. Wax is used to attach small metal balls at the rod ends P, Q, R and S. Each rod is the same size. They're heated uniformly by a Bunsen burner at point X. As the rods warm up, the wax melts and the balls fall off. Why does the ball on the silver rod fall first? So we know that as this Bunsen burner here heats, it's going to cause those particles to vibrate more, conducting the heat through the metal, causing that ball to fall off first at S. So the answer here must be that silver is the best conductor of heat. Four cups A, B, C and D contain hot coffee. Which cup keeps the coffee warm the longest? So first of all, picking whether the outside of the cup should be black or white. Just think about this from a common sense point of view. If you get a cup of coffee in a shop, the cups are white, they're never black. And why is that? Because white is a poor emitter of infrared radiation, which is something that you're after when you want to keep something warm. And then the top of the cup, should it be covered with a lid or no lid? So it needs a lid because there's that layer of air trapped between the lid and the coffee which acts as an insulator and it also stops convection currents being set up when you have the lid. So therefore the answer here is C.